Okay. Hello. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us uh, on this fine Tuesday evening for another Michael's virtual classroom. Um, my name is Bianca from yourinspirations.com, and I'm here with your host today, Tamara Kelly from Moogly Blog. Uh, this evening, Tamara is going to be teaching us how to create a really gorgeous wreath using a few key fall shades of Red Heart Super Saver yarn. Um, I will be in the chat helping you answer any questions you may have. And like Kelly mentioned, this class is being recorded, so you'll be able to find it for reference later. So with that all being said, I will pass it over to the main event, uh, Tamara, to get it started. All right. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everybody. Hope you're having a great night and off to a great fall. It's unusually warm here, so great night to start a fall decor piece, right? Um, as she said, today we're making this fabulous fall wreath, and this is genuinely such a beautiful pattern. Um, this is such an eye catcher. Every time I go to your inspirations and it pops up on my pattern search, it just catches my eye. It's so pretty. And as she said, we're going to be using Red Heart Super Saver. Great uh, for worsted weight yarn. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I love about this is that it's acrylic and it's going to stand up to the elements. So if you want to actually hang your beautiful wreath outdoors, um, especially if you've got a little bit of an overhang, um, this is going to be a great yarn to use for this. Now, as you can see from the picture, and hopefully you've got that PDF with you, I know they'll be dropping that link in the chat if you don't have it. Hopefully you got it when you signed up for the class. Um, but if you look at the picture for this, you can see, and if you look at the written pattern, it's made up of a bunch of really small, basically, appliques, tiny little crochet pieces, leaves, acorns, grapes. Um, I think there's, uh, yeah, leaves, acorns, and grapes. That about sums it up. Um, all these beautiful fall colors, though. So I want you to think about, in addition to the wreath, all the great wing ways you can use these appliques. You could use these, you know, on a table runner for your fall table for this Thanksgiving. You could sew a couple to a napkin ring or to the edge of a napkin um, as a hostess gift. Or when you set your own table, you could apply them along the top of a beautiful tote bag and have a gorgeous gift to give somebody. These are just really great pieces that combine to make this beautiful wreath but you can also take them and make so many other things. So if you've got some great ideas, do definitely drop those in the chat and we'll try and read those out so that we can make sure that those stick for the video that will go up on YouTube here, um, the recording after our live is over. So as we said, we're using Red Heart Super Saver. Of course, we also need a crochet hook. This one recommended in the pattern is a USG four millimeter. Um, but you can use the hook that gives you fabric you like. If you're a real tight crocheter, you can move up. If you're a real loose crocheter, you can move down. Use whatever is comfortable for your hand. Um, and that works with your yarn. So with all that said, let's go ahead. I'm going to bring in my overhand camera and we'll switch over to see these individual little pieces. So I'm going to be following right along with the written pattern, along with all of you. So we're going to go ahead and start with this very first piece, which is the single point leaf. And if you look at the instructions, it says if you want to make the wreath, you need to make 25 of them in color B, which would be your tan color, and 25 of them in D, which would be your uh, tea green or lighter green color. So basically 25 tan and 25 of the lighter green. Um, again, of course, you can actually pick whichever color you'd like to make them in. So I'm going to pull up my tan color since that's what they used in this photo and pull up some of my yarn from the end, of course, make sure it's not getting tangled up with the other end here. And of course, that one, you know what, this particular skein wanted to tangle on me, but there it goes. Okay, so now we have our yarn end. So let's make our single point leaf. Now I'm not going to be making 25 of these on the video today. We'll just get through each of the pieces as best we can. So for our first single point leaf, we start with a chain of 12. So I'm going to come in about six inches from the end of my yarn. You can see there's my cut end right there and make a slip knot and put that on my hook. Now, hopefully most of you have some basic crochet skills. Um, if this is your first time crocheting, you may want to check out um, one of the learn to crochet or beginner crochet classes available on the Michaels YouTube channel. Um, but we're not going to be using anything too tough today. These are mostly going to be some pretty basic stitches. So now that we've got our slip knot on our hook, we're going to start with a chain of 12. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, and 12. Now we're going to be working back into the chain, just like we do when we start most crochet projects. And you have a choice. You can work in under the top two loops like you normally do when you work into a chain, or you can work into that back hump, the underneath portion of the chain. Um, again, whichever you prefer is totally up to you. Both of them work equally well for this pattern. I prefer to work into that back hump, but if you wanna work into a different portion of the chain, again, either way, totally works. So to begin, we're going to start round one with a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So let me bring this up a little bit closer here so we can really get a look at this, um, at these stitches. So you can see here, I've got one chain closest to my hook. I wanna skip over that one and come to the chain after that. So I want to insert my hook under that loop and make a single crochet like so. Then I am going to half double crochet in the next chain. So we yarn over, find the very next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three for a half double crochet. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we double crochet in each of the next three chains. So that means we yarn over, find the next chain, insert our hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two for a double crochet. And we do that two more times for a total of three. So we make our second one and our third one. And here's something I wanna note because I did mention, <clears throat> excuse me, that you may need to adjust your hook size. What you're looking for is kind of a stiff fabric. You can see after just these first few stitches, how this leaf that we're making really, it kind of stands up, it has some body to it. And so when you're using a hook that's this small, a G with this sort of yarn, it's a relatively small hook to use with a worsted weight yarn. And that's the key to creating a little bit more stiffness to it. So if you have to adjust your hook size um, or you choose a different yarn, just make sure that you are using a hook that's a little bit smaller than what's recommended on the yarn label. Um, so after we have those three double crochets made, then we are going to treble crochet in each of the next two chains. So a treble crochet is yarn over twice, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Oh, there we go. And yarn over and pull through two for a treble crochet. Now, I know I saw we have a few beginners in the class and I apologize that I cannot teach you how to crochet and make these appliques in the same class. Um, honestly, it would take a full hour just to get through the basic learning how to crochet stitches. So I apologize if that description on the class was a little bit misleading. Um, but do try and follow along as best you can. And then, like I say, if you need to go back to some of those learn how to crochet classes, then that might be a good start before you come back to this video. So here we've got our treble crochet and we need one more. So we yarn over twice, go to the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. That's how we make a treble. So we've made two of those, and then we double crochet again in each of the next three chains. So yarn over, go find the next chain, go right in there, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. There's our first double crochet, yarn over, find the next stitch, insert our hook and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and then one more, yarn over, find the next chain there, pull up our loop, and finish off our double crochet. There we are. So now you can see we've started out with short stitches. They got a little taller, then they got shorter again, and we're creating that leaf shape. So now we've got just one chain left, and if we come back to our instructions, it says to work four single crochets in that last chain. So as we do that, it's going to sort of stretch around that chain so that we end up working after that across the bottom, those loops of the chain that we did not work into. So first things first, let's go ahead and make those four single crochets all in that very last chain. This should be the one right next to your slip knot. 
can go in there and do one and two and three and I'm just going right into that same stitch every time and then four so now you can see by working four single crochets all into that stitch it creates a curve it pushes those stitches over and around so that now we're able to turn it over and start working into the base of those chains that we made at the very beginning so let me just check my work real quick I need to make sure okay yes so we are done working into that chain that's what I wanted to make sure of so we're going to come to the next one as we work across the bottom of those chains or the bottom of those stitches there so next thing we do is work a double crochet in each of the next three chains so we yarn over and if we look at our work here and see there's that last one we worked into so now we just come right here and this is this shows why I love working into that back or bottom hump of the chain now that I'm working into that other side of the chain I have two loops just like a regular stitch that I can work into for these stitches so I'm going to yarn over and go right into the bottom of that first double crochet right there and make another double crochet so there's one let me just go right to the next one just as if we were working across a regular row and do a second <clears throat> and I need to pull up a little bit more yarn here oh my skein fell off the table but that's all right and then we yarn over and come right to that next one for our third one there we are so you can sort of see that leaf short starting to take shape here and then we treble crochet in each of the next two chains so yarn over twice this will be going into the bottom of those other two trebles we made before insert our hook into that chain yarn over and pull up our loop and yarn over and pull through two three times so there's our first treble yarn over twice go to the next stitch insert your hook into the base of that stitch there yarn over and pull up your loop and yarn over and pull through twice pull through two loops three times there we are so that's two treble crochets and then we double crochet in each of the next three we're kind of making that same shape up and then down again creating our hill so we find the next one so there's one and two and three there we are now you may find that your leaf sort of wants to curl up a little bit like this but that's okay if, again if you look at the finished leaves here on our pattern a little bit of curling is what we expect from a real leaf and it's what we're getting from this leaf as well so we've made those three double crochets now we have double crochet in the next chain so yarn over insert your hook right in the bottom that next stitch there yarn over and pull up a loop and yarn over and pull through all three for the half double crochet and then finally we single crochet in the next chain right there and then it wants us to slip stitch in the last chain so that's that one right there the one we actually skipped when we crocheted in the second one we're going to go ahead and just try as best we can to get our hook right in that very last chain so however it looks and feels good to you get your hook in there for a slip stitch we yarn over and pull that loop through the base there and through the other loop that was on our hook there we are and there is a slip stitch so with that we have finished round one of our single point leaf so we've got a pretty good shape there and we're ready for round two uh, were there any questions on round one that I could answer Bianca so not specifically on round one, but we are wondering um, if we can use any colors or any types of yarn for this project. Um, absolutely. If you, like I did mention earlier, if you want to hang it outside, I would definitely recommend looking for a yarn that's kind of going to stand up to the elements. You know, you want to make sure it's not something that you're going to have to hand wash or lay flat to dry. That's not something you want to put outdoors. But other than that, I would say you can definitely have a lot have a lot of fun with this, especially if you aren't using it for the wreath. Um, you could use thread and do some really delicate flowers and grape leaves and all kinds of things and uh, attach them, like I say, to some cloth napkins or napkin rings um, or even a table runner. 
You could use um, lily sugar and cream in cotton and attach them to each other and make, you know, a beautiful fall themed dishcloth or basket. Um, really, the possibilities are endless. You could even use Bernat blanket and make them big and bold and chunky and have a lot of fun with them that way, too. So, like I say, if you guys have got some great ideas on how to use these, definitely drop those in the chat and uh, let us know because you could mix up the yarn on this and make all sorts of things. Just make sure that if you change the yarn that you do adjust your hook to fit that yarn so that it gives you, again, whatever hook it is, and with your attention, that may vary, whatever hook size it is that gives you a nice stiff leaf. You do want these little pieces to kind of stand up on their own a little bit, um, have a little bit of body to them. If we were crocheting a sweater, we'd probably be looking for something really drapey and soft, but we want our crochet for this project to be a little bit stiffer and sort of stand up here on its own. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and start round two. Now for round two, I do want to go ahead and pull up a, a stitch marker here. It's just going to make it a little bit easier when you're working in rounds to keep track of where you began. So this is the sort of stitch marker that I recommend for crochet. You want to make sure that it opens, um, that it isn't a solid ring like you use for knitting. This is the kind that you want for crochet. It might look like this, uh, which is sort of like a safety pin, a plastic safety pin, or um, it may be a ring that sort of has a break in it that you can open up that way. So definitely have one of those on hand um, if you have it available. If you don't have one available, a um, paper clip can work as a good substitute in a pinch. Um, and yes, Lori, it would absolutely work with cotton yarn. I think these would be a lot of fun in cotton yarn and open up so many more possibilities that you could do with them. So let's go ahead and move on to round two here. I am going to start, actually it doesn't say to chain one, I was going to chain one because that was my natural reaction, but it doesn't say two. So we're going to start instead with just single crocheting right into the next stitch. And we're going to single crochet in each of the first 12 stitches. So if I look right there, I'm get my hook back in there. This is the stitch that I slip stitched to. So I'm going to go ahead and start working right there in that very next stitch. I'm just going to go ahead and insert my hook right in there and make a single crochet. But because we're working sort of unusual shapes and stitches here, this is where I'm going to put my stitch marker right in the top of that single crochet I just made. And that will help, help me keep track. You know, if I lose count here while I'm chatting with you and I have to count back those 12, I know that's where I began our second round. So there's one, and then I need to do a total of 12. So we come to the next stitch, insert your hook under those top two loops, yarn over and pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull through two for a single crochet. So there's our second, then our third, then our fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. And this should take you right there to the opposite end. So we started there and now we've worked all the way up one side of our leaf. So after we've made those 12 single crochets, I need to look at my instructions here. Then we chain two, <clears throat> excuse me, one, two, just as we chained before. And then we slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. And this creates a really nice point for our leaf. So again, we wanna find that second chain from our hook, the one that's furthest away. We've chained two, so there's those two humps right there. I want to skip the one that closest to my hook and go right into that one with a slip stitch there. So we just insert our hook, yarn over, and pull that loop through the stitch and through the loop that was on our hook. There we are. So that'll give us our little point right there. And then we're single crochet in each of the next 12 stitches. So we work our way back down the other side. So that's the side we last, or the stitch rather, that we last single crocheted into. So we find the next one and work our way down. So there's one, two, <clears throat> excuse me, three, four, five, 
six, seven. You can see how much it really wants to curl up on me here, and that's okay. You can kind of pull it out straight if you want to. And uh, but you want you want your leaves to curl. If you go outside right now around my house, at least there are lots of very curly leaves on the ground. So I have lost track, but I know I've got to be getting close here because I'm got my marked stitch there. So let me just come back here and look and see. After our slip stitch there, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So now I have my 12 single crochets worked down that side. So we slip stitched in the base of the leaf. And this was our first single crochet. You can see right there is the base of our leaf where we slip stitched before. So we know we're in the right spot. So I'm just going to slip stitch right in that same slip stitch again. There we are. And then we, let's see, look at my instructions here. And then we chain four, one, two, three, four, and then we slip stitch in the second chain from the hook and in each of the next two chains, and then slip stitch again in the base of that leaf to make the stem. So we've made our leaf and now we're making our little stem. So we've got a chain of four. And once again, I'm going to choose to work into the back hump of the chain, but you can work into the different portion if you prefer. I'm going to skip the one closest to my hook come to the next stitch, insert my hook, and slip stitch. So we just pull that loop through, and that pull that loop right through the loop that was originally on our hook. And we have to kind of look real close here. These slip stitches can get real small. Find the next chain there. Sometimes you have to sort of push it through. There we are. Slip stitch in there. And then there should be one chain left right there. The very first one we made for our stem. And we slip stitch into there. Now the instructions tell you the next thing to do is slip stitch back into that base one more time and then break your yarn and finish off. But I want to show you a little technique that I think gives you a little bit better finish on things like this. So rather than doing that slip stitch and then breaking my yarn and maybe putting a knot in there to secure it, I'm going to stop right there before I do that final slip stitch and I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn and I want to leave a good six inch tail or so I always do because I like to weave in my ends and make sure they're secure and then I'm going to go ahead and just pull up on my hook I'm going to just hold this down here there we go until I've got that end pulled all the way through now that stitch is pretty secure in that it's not coming back out there's no active stitches here if I pull down on this um, yarn it's not going anywhere but we still want to connect it up here for the base so now what i want you to do is take your yarn needle go ahead and thread that thread that end on your yarn needle <clears throat> excuse me and now if we come back to our little leaf here let me get that stitch marker out of the way see right there is about where we'd want to slip stitch basically into the base of this leaf wherever you can get your hook to go in there but instead of slip stitching, I'm going to go ahead and just sew this yarn end down into that stitch. So I came right under those two loops like I normally would with my hook. Then I just pull that loop down nice and tight. And then I'm going to put my yarn needle right back to the same place that strand was coming out. It's kind of hard to see with this tan yarn. But if I pull up on it a little bit, you can see that right there is the end that came out at the end. I've now sewn into the base of my leaf. And I want to put my hook, my needle, excuse me, right back in that same spot, right in the middle of that stitch where we ended and where that yarn's coming out. And then when I do that and just pull down nice and tight, it creates a really beautiful invisible join. And you're not going to have a big knot there. You're not going to have a lump um, from finishing off a slip stitch and then pulling that end through. It just creates a really nice smooth edge to your leaf. So with that done, you can now remove your stitch marker and set that aside and weave in your ends. And that is how you make the single point leaf. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, for the wreath project, you do weave in your ends and then you attach your leaves and different things that you make to the wreath form with pins. Um, so greenery pins, they're kind of U-shaped. 
you just um unfortunately i don't have one with me but if you'll use your imagination we'll pull out this handy dandy paper clip and it's basically the outside portion here just a u and then what you do is slide the back of your applique Oop, let me get centered there slide the back of your applique or your piece over that edge of that pin there and then you can see it's on there and you use those two points to stick it down into your wreath it's just that simple but if you were using this piece for a different purpose if you wanted to actually sew it onto something then you could cut these ends leave a really long end at the beginning and cut a really long end at the end if you want to and then actually go ahead and use those ends to sew your piece to your project whatever you wanted to sew that applique to it's just a little tip it's the way i like to do it um, because then i've got fewer ends to weave in i can actually put those ends to use rather than weaving them in and then cutting another piece of yarn to sew it on with so that can be a really good tip if you are using it to sew it on to another thing but otherwise this is your single point leaf um were there any questions i could answer before we move on to the next piece i don't think so it looks like everyone is kind of humming along here okay great I apologize, I'm losing my voice a little bit. I've been live three times already today and <laughs> it's just starting to go on me a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so let's move on to our five point leaf. So if I pull up our instructions here, this one's going to be a really good one to make next um, because it's another leaf, but it starts off with a different technique. This one is going to start with the magic ring. So if you were making the, again, if you were making the actual wreath, um, you would make 12 of these with F, which is sort of this, um, or F is the berry red color. Uh, and then the, and then six of them with G, which is sort of the, the orangier color, which I've got right here. So that's, that is awfully bright on camera, isn't it? I'm a little worried those stitches might be harder to see. Let's see. I think they might actually be easier to see in the papaya than in the red or in the, the orangey color here. So let's go ahead and try this one um, for our five point leaf. Find my yarn and again, and once again, you always want to uh, make sure you have a good six inches or so of yarn before you start crocheting, before you put any slip knot or anything else in. But this pattern, this particular five point leaf is going to start, um, sorry, I'm having a little trouble with this yarn. Let me grab that end there okay this leaf uh starts with a magic ring it does not start with a slip knot it does not um start with your usual long series of chains so if you haven't worked with a magic ring before you'll get to learn a new technique this is one of my favorite ways to start anything that's worked in the round it creates a really nice closed hole in the center um, so if you want an open hole, it's not a good technique, but anytime you want a nice solid closed hole in the center of your project, whether it's a hat or a magic, a, a magic leaf um, for a wreath, uh, you, uh, the magic ring is a great way to start. <clears throat> so I'm going to start again about six inches or so in from the tail and cut end of my yarn. And then I'm going to take my non hook hand and I'm going to wrap the yarn around my forefinger twice towards me. So let's do that together. We take the end of the yarn got my finger here I'm going to go towards me so just like you would yarn over your yarn on your hook yarn over your finger once twice just like that so I'm going to pull it off and do it again here got my yarn end right there so I'm going to pick that up I've got my non hook hand so I go over my finger once and then twice and then I like to just use these fingers sort of secure that end and hold on to it a little bit when I pick up my hook so I don't lose my loops here so then insert your hook under both of those loops right along your finger there like so and then what I like to do is just ever so gently and I'm using my non-hook hand to secure both the end that's attached to the skein and the cut end and I just pull that loop right underneath the one that's actually the end. Let me go ahead and do that again. It's hard to get that all on camera, I know. Got my cut end of yarn there. I'm gonna pick it up, go over my finger twice towards me, insert the hook under both of those loops, use the hook to grab the one that's furthest back, the one that I went around my finger twice, and pull it just under 
the second one, the one that's actually the cut end here. Then you can yarn over and pull up your loop for your first chain. And now it's sort of linked together here that sort of locks those two loops together. Now, as we continue around for round one, we really want to make sure that any stitch we make goes under both of these loops because it's pulling on this tail end that will let us close this up and what creates the magic of the magic ring. So I've got my loops locked here together. And the first thing I need to do for round one is chain three. And that's going to count as our first double crochet. So we just one, two, three. Now you'll notice I still have the ring on my finger. I'm not going to take this off until I've got a couple of stitches worked in here so that it holds it together. So I've got my chain three, and the next thing we need to do is 11 double crochets in the ring. <clears throat> so we're going to yarn over, and now we're going to go under both of those loops. And it doesn't matter if they become overlapped or, you know, wound around each other a little bit. We just want to make sure that your hook goes under that ring and that tail end. Then we can yarn over, pull up our loop, yarn over again, and make our double crochet just the way we normally do. So let me do another one of those. I'm going to yarn over, go under both of those loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Now that I've got a couple stitches worked into that ring, I can go ahead and pull my finger out. And you can see how those stitches are really holding it together. But as we continue around, we still want to make sure that we go through that ring and that we also enclose this tail end here in each of these stitches. So we've got our first three here, and at the end of round one, we should have a total of 12. So there's three, we've got nine more to make. <clears throat> excuse me, so I'm gonna continue to single, or excuse me, double crochet right into that ring. Again, just making sure that each of those stitches goes into that ring and over that tail end. Were there any questions I could answer here while I continue to put these double crochets in? Still seem like we're uh, doing pretty well here on the questions. Okay, great. And I know um, sometimes I can go a little fast. We only have an hour and there's so many pieces I want to get through. Um, but as they said at the beginning, this class is recorded. Um, so you can always go back and watch them later. And the great thing about the recordings is, of course, you can use that gear icon to um, speed up and slow down the video, which can be really helpful. Um, I can only slow down so much and have the stitches still actually work um you know just moving slow motion so um but with that gear icon you can really slow it down and that's something that i use a lot when i want to learn a new technique or a new stitch it's just really helpful to slow it down really kind of past the the personal capability of actual people so let's uh, see how many i've got here i should have 12 we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve very lucky there since i wasn't counting i lost track while i was chatting but you can see here, I've worked into that ring and over that tail in each one of these stitches. It's totally locked in there. So now we can take that little tail and just gently give it a pull. And I do like to sort of steady, you know, my work with my other hand here. I don't want to be crazy with it, but just gently pull. You can see that circle starting to close up. I just gave it a real good big tug there at the end. If you're using a more delicate yarn, be a little careful. You don't want to break your yarn at this point. But then you can drop that end and look, look how beautifully closed up the center of that circle is. So to finish this row, what we need to do is slip stitch in the third chain of that beginning chain three. Remember that counted as our first double crochet. So we can just go ahead and put our slip stitch right in there. There we are. Now I do want to point out when you go to weave in your ends after making a magic circle. You want to weave in your end using your yarn needle like you normally would, but make sure that you weave in that end in a couple of different directions. You can go see if I went this way, it would be going sort of the same direction it wants to go right now, but then turn and go back the opposite direction. And don't be afraid to sort of sew through the end that you sewed in one direction and split it going back the other side. Now, all this happens inside these stitches, ideally, so that you can't see it. But all that back and forth inside those stitches really locks in that end and it will keep it from opening up on you right now if i really wanted to because i've just pulled on this tail end i could if i tried really tried i could probably 
get this circle back open. Um, but you don't want that to do happen on your finished project. So just make sure that you even that end in both directions. And that's really the key to locking together your magic ring or your magic circle. It goes by a couple different names. Um, you know, so if you see it by different names, don't be confused. That magic ring, magic circle is all that same sort of maneuver. <clears throat> different people can make them different ways, but that's the way I like to make it. And I think it's um, a great technique to use. So that is it for round one for our five point leaf. And now we're ready for round two. We're going to start again with a chain three and that's going to count again as our first double crochet. So what I'm going to do to make it a little bit easier when I come back around here at the end of this round is I'm going to put my stitch marker right in that third chain right there. And that will help let me know right there is the top of my quote unquote very first double crochet for round two. So after we do that, then we do a pico. And a pico is a special stitch. So if you see that instruction, you say, oh gosh, what does that mean? You always need to go to your special stitches. Pico can mean different things in different patterns. So you always need to check the special stitches of your pattern. For this pattern, pico means chain three and slip stitch in the third chain from the hook. So we have our chain three as our first double crochet. Don't let that confuse you. Now we need to chain three again. So one, two, three, and then we slip stitch in the third chain from the hook. So that's the first of the three we just made. So the one right next to our stitch marker here. Now, again, this is another uh, place where different people like to work into different portions of the chain to make their slip stitch for their pico. But I'm just going to go ahead and go in that back hump again and simply slip stitch right in there. And that little that little blip right there. Oop, wandering off screen. Sorry, that little blip right there. That is our pico. So then we double crochet in the next stitch. So we come back down here. We had that double that chain three counts as our first stitch. So we want to find the next one and double crochet there. There we are. And then we go back to our instructions. Um, and I'm sorry, I did that wrong. It was first, I put that stitch in the wrong spot. I jumped ahead of myself. We have our chain three, then we make our pico, and then we double crochet in the first stitch again. So we come back to that very first stitch, the one we joined to. One of my favorite things about crochet, I always say, is how easy it is to pull out mistakes, because I make them all the time. When you're following along with instructions, it's easy to skip a little part, but then you can just go back and fix it. So we've got our double crochet in our first stitch, and then we work two double crochets in each of the next two double crochets. So two double crochets in each of the next two stitches. So now we can go to the next one and make one and two double crochets. And those are both worked right into the top of that same stitch, so we're increasing. And then we do it again in the next one. So double crochet. And another double crochet. There we are. And then we come back to our instructions and see that we double crochet in the next double crochet and then chain five. So double crochet in the next double crochet and then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Then we single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each of the next three chains. And this is going to make the little stem at the bottom of our five point leaf. So we skip the one closest to the hook and slip stitch, or was it single crochet? I'm sorry. You single crochet, not slip stitch for these. These are single crochets, a little heftier. The other one had a slip stitch stem. This one uses single crochet, so it'll be a little thicker, a little different look. So just single crochet in each of those chains until we get back to our base here. There's the last one. There we are. So now we've got our little chunky stem right at the base of our five point leaf. And then we double crochet in the same double crochet as the last double crochet. So what does that mean? We double crocheted, we put one double crochet in that stitch, then we made our stem. So we just want to come back and put a second double crochet in that same stitch right there, right where we did before, before we made our stem. There we go. 
then come back to our instruction two double crochets in each of the next two double crochets so sort of the same thing we did coming coming down this side before the stem we're going to do the same thing going up here so there's one and two in that stitch and then we want to put two double crochets in the next stitch so there's one and two and then check the instructions let's see okay then we double crochet pico double crochet in the next stitch so let's do that together i'm going to pull up a little bit more yarn here so in this very next stitch we double crochet then we pico pico was chain three one two three and slip stitch in the first chain made there we go then double crochet back in that same stitch all righty and then we look at our instructions here and we single crochet and half double crochet in the next double crochet so we find the next stitch and we just want to double check yep single crochet and then half double crochet both worked in the same stitch there then we double crochet pico single crochet in the next stitch so a little different combo we find that next stitch we will double crochet then pico one two three slip stitch in that first chain made and then we finish this combo with a single crochet back in that same stitch so if you're following along with the written instructions you'll notice when you're working all in that same stitch like that where did this one go right there double crochet pico single crochet in next double crochet your clue that those are all going into that stitch in addition to saying it is that they're in parentheses so for our beginners that's what the, those parentheses help us see is that all three of those are going into one stitch together so now we've got another set of parentheses a whole big line of stitches in next double crochet so that means all of those stitches are going to go into that next stitch so let me look at here find that next stitch and we start that whole next line there so we have first half double crochet double crochet and these are all going in the same stitch there treble crochet so yarn over twice insert the hook in the loop you pull up your loop yarn over and pull through two pull through two pull through two some more yarn up here and then we pico so we chain three one two three slip stitch in the first chain we made then we treble again yarn over twice go back in that same stitch we're still working in that same stitch and one thing i want to point out that can happen very easily here as we're making a bunch of stitches all into that same stitch it can be easy to accidentally wrap your yarn around sort of the stitches that you've already made you just want to make sure that you bring your yarn down so you're just coming over the top of that stitch there at the bottom you don't want to accidentally wrapping around those stitches you're going to end up with some loose stitches that way so just make sure you get that yarn over down there at the base where you're working in so there is our next treble and then after that we double crochet and half double crochet so right still in that same stitch double crochet and half double crochet there so right there all in that one stitch let's kind of take a look at what that what that did it created this really great point on this five point leaf so all into that same stitch right there we worked a half double crochet a double crochet a treble crochet a pico another treble crochet then a double crochet and finally a half double crochet and that created that really great point just by using those different heights of stitches and putting the pico right in the middle so 
With that done, we can move on to our next set of stitches all worked into the next stitch. So I do want to point out too, when you've worked a bunch of stitches into a stitch like this, if you look very closely right there, there's the top of the next stitch. It's almost covered up by those stitches that we've made. So make sure that when you work a bunch of stitches into one stitch like that, you sort of give them a tug and make sure that you're not going to accidentally end up skipping the very next stitch. It's very, very easy to do. I think everybody's done it at least once. So pull that over and make sure you can get into that next stitch. So in that ne very next stitch, we're going to work a single crochet followed by a pico, chain three, slip stitch into that very first chain you made. Get right in there, there we are. Like so, there we go. And then double crochet all in that same stitch again. So you're making our little points here for our leaf. And then finally, what we need to do, the very last thing here is half double crochet and single crochet in the last stitch. I can see that, that we've done it right, we're in the right spot. There's one stitch left to work into before the slip stitch that finished off our first round. And there we've got our first stitch, so we know we're in the right spot. So in that very last stitch, we wanna work a half double crochet. So we yarn over and insert our hook, pull up a loop, Yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And then finally, a single crochet into that same last stitch. So to finish this off, uh, we would simply join with a slip stitch in the third stitch of that beginning, that beginning chain three we did right there. Or you can do the same thing I did for the other one. You can go ahead and cut our yarn, pull up on that loop, just pull it right on up through the middle of that stitch. Grab our yarn needle, put our yarn, our yarn on our needle, there we are. And then because I've got that stitch marker right there marking that third chain, it's very easy for me to see. I can go right under those two top loops of the chain, just like if I was slip stitching to it. Pull that yarn end right through. And then I want to send it right, send that needle right back into the middle of that stitch it came out of, the last one we made. And then when I pull that through, you can see that creates basically the look of another stitch. I could pull it really tight and kind of make it disappear altogether, or I can just let it look like another stitch right there, but it creates a really nice, oops, there we go, a really nice finished edge. And then of course I can take those ends, weave them in, um, in preparation for the wreath, Cut it off longer if I wanted to sew them on. But if I'll go ahead and take this little stitch marker out of the way here, we can see that right there is our five pointed leaf. So now we've done some with chains. We've done one that started with a magic ring. So I was able to demonstrate that. And I was also able to demonstrate the Pico for these ones. So those are some of the um, really some of the tougher moves that you have to make to make any of these pieces. I can see we're running out of time which is why I apologize. I wasn't able to um, break down some of these stitches as much as, as maybe we would have liked. But uh, like I say, that's why we record it, right? So we've got just 10 minutes left. Were there any questions on this one before I try and kind of squeeze in a little bit more here? I think we're good to, to keep going here. Okay, great. So the next one, if we look at our instructions here, the next one listed is the oak leaf and the oak leaf is going to be really similar to what we did for the what was called single point leaf there we are you can see we start there with a chain you can see if you look at the picture how you work around both sides of that chain and then work around it again to create those shapes using some of those stitches we just did um, on our five point leaf the grape leaf is very similar again to the five point leaf it starts as well with a magic circle and then you just keep working those stitches around, um, building up with taller stitches to create the points. We've got a little stem there, just as we did before. The grapes are largely similar in that basically there's a large grape and a small grape, um, but these do have a slightly different stitch. So let's go ahead and jump in with the large grape. Now, obviously to make the grape, you would use um, a dark purple, but I'm a little concerned that this won't show up well on camera. I feel like we're going to actually lose the stitches if I try and show it in this color. 
So while I do recommend, you know, that you make your grapes um, purple, green grapes are also delicious. So let's try and make a green grape, um, just so it's a little bit easier to see here on camera. So to begin, the large grape, which is, like I say, a lot like the small grape, just with a few extra rounds here, we're going to start again with our magic ring. So I've got my tail end here, and I'm going to take it and wrap that yarn end twice around my non-hook finger towards me. So I've got that tail end towards me on that side of my finger. And then I can go in there with my hook, grab that furthest one, just gently pull it under the loop there. So they're sort of locked together. And then what we're going to do is work five single crochets into the ring. Now I am going to recommend that you go ahead and chain one. It doesn't have to be a big chain one here. You don't have to pull it up super high, but by doing a chain one, that'll help lock it a little bit together before we start putting those single crochets into the ring. So to put five single crochets in the ring, we're just going to insert our hook under both of those loops, just as we did, oops, before. Try not to split the yarn like I just did. There we go. And then yarn over, pull that loop up and through the ring, and yarn over and pull through two for our single crochet. So there's our first one. Let's try and get one more before we pull our finger out here. Yarn over and pull that loop up and through. Yarn over again and pull through those two loops. And now we can pull our finger out. There we are. You can see those single crochets are going to hold our ring steady for us. So we've got two, we need three more. So there's our third one. Make sure again that you go into that ring and that you capture that tail end as well, or you won't be able to close it up. So there's four and there is five. Oop, there we are. Now, what I want to do is go ahead is mark the first stitch and then move the marker up as it, each ring is completed or each round, I should say. Uh, the thing about this grape is it's worked in a spiral. So we are not going to be joining at the end of these rounds. We're going to keep working around in a spiral. And when you do that, you really do need to use a stitch marker because it's very easy to lose track of which one was the first, uh, the first stitch. Normally, when we work in rounds, we have a little turning chain that creates a little ladder or a bump that lets us know where that round begins, but not when we're working in spirals. So we really have to have that stitch marker to help us keep track. So what we're going to be doing is making sure we always mark that first stitch of the round. Now, I don't have to do it on the first one because I know what the first stitch of the first round is. So what I'm going to do now is gently pull on that tail, sort of close that up a little bit. Don't have to make it super tight right now. I just want to get that first clip a stitch closer to the stitch I just made so I can reach on over there. And then we find that very first single crochet we made. Sometimes it wants to hide a little bit right there, especially when we don't have a really tall turning chain to find it with. So just take your time. There we are. Get in there. And I'm going to put a single crochet right in that very first single crochet we made. There we go. Now you can see I was struggling just a little bit to pull that through. Again, it's kind of what we want. We want to make a really tight fabric for these. Sometimes that means just pulling that little hook through our fabric. So I just made a single crochet in that first single crochet we'd made in round one. So that's where I want to put that stitch marker. That will let me know that's the first stitch of the round. So then I'm going to go ahead and put another single crochet in that stitch and then two single crochets in each remaining stitch around. So for round two, we want to have a total of uh, 10 single crochets. So I just went right back in that same one for a second one, and then find the next stitch and put two single crochets in there. There's one and two. There we are. Let me pull up a little bit more yarn from this skein here. Find the next stitch, one and two. Find the next stitch right there. One and two. And what we're doing right now is we're actually working in a flat circle because we're doubling our stitches here on our second round. We started with five stitches and now we have 10. There we are. So we should have a total of 10 stitches. And you can see how that stitch marker was really important. When you work in a spiral like this, it would be very easy to just keep going. And that is what we're going to do. And that's the look we want. But without that stitch marker, I wouldn't know, unless I'd counted back 10, that that was the very first stitch that I made in this round. So it's just, 
It'll save a lot of headaches in the end. So for round three, we're going to do two single crochets in the next stitch and then a single crochet in the stitch after that. And that's our repeat. We're going to be increasing by five again. So we've got our marked stitch here. So we begin round three with two single crochets in the first stitch. So I'm working into the marked stitch. I'm going to move that stitch marker out of the way and put my first single crochet in there. And now this is the new first single crochet for round three. So I need to put my stitch marker in that one. And then a second single crochet in there. Then one single crochet in the next single crochet. And that is our repeat, which means that's the series of stitches we do over and over until we get to the end. Two single crochets in the next single crochet. One, two, one single crochet in the next. Two single crochets in the next. One, two, and one single crochet in the next. Two single crochets in the next. One and two. And one single crochet in the one after that. You can see we're almost at the end here. We have just two more stitches left that we can work into before we get to that marked stitch. So we'd go two in the next one. One, two, and one in the one after that. So again, now we should have a total of 15 single crochets. Um, let's see. And then we have rounds four through six, which say simply single crochet in each single crochet around. That's pretty straightforward. So for the sake of time, because we're at the very end and there's one more stitch I want to show, we're going to skip over rounds four through six, which is just single crochet in each single crochet around and jump to round seven, because that starts off with a single crochet two together. And that's the only stitch from this whole set of patterns that I haven't shown you yet. So let's go ahead and do that together. I'm going to go ahead and move my stitch marker out of the way. And we're going to make a single crochet two together. So to do that, I find the very next stitch, insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. And now if I was making a regular single crochet, this is where I'd yarn over and pull through two to finish it. But I need to single crochet two together. I need to make a decrease. So now with those two loops still on my hook, I insert my hook in the very next stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop. And now you can see I've got three loops on my hook, but I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. So even though I went into two stitches, if we look at the top right there, I've made just one stitch. We have one V right there at the top. So I would mark that as my first stitch of the round. And then continue around with whatever the instructions are. But anytime you see SC2TOG, that's how it's abbreviated. Right there, SCTOG, that means single crochet two together. That means you simply go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, go into the stitch after that, pull up a loop, then yarn over and pull through all three. And you've turned two stitches into one. So you can see how that wants to curve up our little grape. You'd want to flip it this way as you're working on it so that you're working from the outside of your grape and not the inside, but that's going to pull it back in to give you that great shape. And you're also going to use that stitch when you do your acorn, which has, oops, there we go, which has some shaping as well. But we did actually get through, I believe, all of the actual stitches used for all of these patterns. So you need to rearrange them a little bit and follow along with the written instructions, but all the stitches themselves have actually been demoed. So with that, I think we have to take it back to the main camera here. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I knew we weren't going to get through all the pieces. I'm glad we got through as many as we could. Um, hopefully you find this video helpful. Again, feel free to speed it up or slow it down um, on the recording. Um, that can be really, really helpful to, you know, on the, the pieces that you need a little bit more time with. Um, we all have our own challenges with crochet. And as we learn, being able to slow that stuff down can be really helpful. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. Um, Bianca or Kelly, or is there anything you needed to say before we go? It's quiet, so I guess not. I think they're all set. Um, if you didn't get... Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Go ahead. Um, all good on my end. Bianca, did you have an exit you wanted to go over? Also good on my end. Thank you so much, okay. everybody. Great. Thanks so much, I, once, everyone. 
Okay, thanks. Once again, that's the fabulous fall wreath on yarn inspirations if you're looking for it still. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.